Expect the unexpected today at HGC North America as several of our more experimental teams prepare to do battle. I'm Gilly Reed, your host. Joining me, Jay Howe. You know, with a new patch coming into HGC next week, there's never been a better time to bring in those pocket picks. Am I right? Well, I mean, you're going to be reaching deep into the pockets because Jimmy and Asmo next week, I think, will no longer be pocket picks because all of a sudden they are going to be at the forefront of the meta, maybe one more than the other, but we're going to find out next week. But definitely this week, as you said, we have seen a wide variety of heroes from these teams, so there is a lot to be determined. It's like you can come into the drafts, you can prepare for the drafts, but it's better to just, like, close all your notes and mm -hmm. then be like, oh, you know, whatever they pick, you can expect that. Yeah, and then just try to figure it out from there. And one of the best ways to do a draft and as we look at the standings today, uh, those teams that we're talking about are Team Octalysis, Simplicity, and No Tomorrow, who have all brought their own flavor to drafts in some way. We're also going to see Heroes Hearth Esports versus No Tomorrow. And though Heroes Hearth Jhao used to be a team that was very <laughs> experimental, that liked to change things up in a draft, they've been notoriously very standard, waiting to see if someone makes them change that up. And so far, nobody has. They're super meta right now, and it starts with Ishbu on the front line. We know what Crowan's doing, but when we do get to that series, I've got some interesting stats about Arthalon and about the role that he's starting to take on for that team. All right. So definitely some uh, some evolving happening with that team and then that back line. But make no mistake about it, Ishbu is a major reason why that team is doing the way that they are right now. Well, and talking about expecting the unexpected, something went down in Europe that I think nobody thought was going to happen. And that's, of course, the reverse sweep over Fnatic by Leftovers, who now sit 2-2 two two over Fnatic in standings. Congratulations to them. That was a hard-fought win. We also saw Method get another win over the Monkey Menagerie. But later on in North America today, we'll see Heroes Hearth Esports and see what No Tomorrow can do versus them. But we start the day with Octalysis versus Simplicity. I'm just going to roll it back real quick. All you right. Know, I love to run it back right? and run it down Already. sometimes. DAB, when he made his splash early this year, the team did not have a ton of success. And I'm, but I'm like, my goodness, who is this guy? And how is he doing so well? And just last week, you and I, like, we're just sitting there. I'm like, man, I have so much fun watching DAB. I, I really do. And then they come out today <laughs> and get the upset. He goes from, like, a little bit of a name, making a name for himself, to they keep winning. He's going to be a household name. I love watching him play. But obviously our focus on our first series today, that is a big one because Octalysis, they've had two losses to the two top teams in North America. They expect to be a top four team. They have had a wide variety of heroes and it doesn't look like they have quite developed an identity yet. And I think it's got to start today against simplicity because that for me, an identity, this is, you have to stop trying to experiment so much and show us who you really are. Cause right now I still have no idea. This is a team that suffered two morale shattering losses last weekend, a reverse sweep versus tempo storm and losing zero three to heroes hearth when in every single game to varying degrees, they had an early game lead. This is also a team that, clean some things up, get their synergy more on lock. They're a team that's still coming together versus a team that wasn't with Heroes Hearth. Those are games that they can win. It's all about can they man maintain their morale despite those very difficult losses. And as you said, it needs to be this weekend. This is when things need to click because they're not only facing simplicity, they're facing endemic. But two players that no doubt we're going to have our eyes on quite a lot in this match are K1 Pro and Goku. So let's hear from them about this matchup. I think Simplicity is on the rise right now at the moment. They've been uh, showing up sometimes and other times they haven't like performed the best they can. But if they're having a good day, they can definitely pro uh, pose a threat to us. Uh, so if I'm going to predict the series, I'm going to have to say probably a 3-1 for us. Well, Octalysis is a really strong team. I think they have some of the strongest individual players in North America, but they've been off to a pretty shaky start. I don't know, they just had a rough couple sets. They were against some really hard teams and they had the unfortunate reverse sweep where they were just playing on unoptimal conditions, but I'm expecting a really tough match because they're all really good players. I just think they haven't figured out their play style yet but if they get that fixed i really fear this team i think they have some of the best players in north america they should be one of the top teams
Got to hear from K1 Pro, and he, to some degree, agreed with you, Jay Hao, that he feels like Simplicity or Octalysis are still finding themselves in draft, although Simplicity themselves played quite a lot of different things last week versus Tempo Storm, and they now sit among some of the most played heroes per team that we've seen in Phase 2. So I think between the two of these teams, we are going to see a very quickly shifting draft as we get into the later stages of it in games 3, 4, and 5. I think for me, I'm looking at the stats, and it does not bode well for either team. When you expect more of that load to be distributed to your backliners, once you take away Sergeant Hammer from Hosty, and then all of a sudden it's like, what are the backliners that we're going to see from K1? We know he loves Jaina. We know they love Li Ming. But in the compositions that they've run, it hasn't necessarily been there. Where's Hosty's Hanzo that carried them in quite a few matches in Phase 1? I want to see that develop. And on the other side, Prismat and Draded are still looking for their kind of what is our common duo. And again, the wide variety of heroes, I think it's hard for them to find rhythm in this team. I mean, they're coming back. Prismat's been here before, but this is a different team and a team with the front line as you said experimenting a lot and I think it's having the back line is having trouble because of that trying to figure out what they want to do because kill numbers on both those on all four of those members are drastically lower than where they were in their previous versions of themselves so I, I look for those to rise but I, I think a lot of it does come down to the frontline play of these teams. Well, the only common battleground between the two of them is Volskaya Foundry, and that is where we're going to start off the series. And this is a place where we might have Sergeant Hammer or a Sergeant Hammer ban. And it's a place where we know that you're going to want a lot of consistent poke. Looking at what we've seen banned, Simplicity is going to cave with their Braxis holdout ban. Sky Temple is the choice for Octalysis as they do continue to change things up. That is also the ban that Tempo Storm has gone to. So now I'm starting to see or wonder about some of the higher tiered uh, in the standings teams banning Sky Temple versus these teams who have shown a lot of prowess on it. A lot of it, I think, has come down to the night camp priority in the top lane and the top temple because getting the full night camp value and the top temple has led to early leads since that experience is now redistributed more into those forts, getting that first fort gives you the better race towards 10 and gives you the advantage. I think we've seen so much play and focus on that that a lot of teams are like, look, why risk it? Why bother with that? That seems to be the clear cut. Maybe there's some more deeper rooted things, but definitely Sky Temple, a lot of top teams like not risking that first part. Well, as we talk about Volskaya Foundry, again, this is a place where um, Sergeant Hammer is very likely to be chosen for simplicity, though it's not as successful for simplicity as they like her on Towers of Doom. But when I talked to K1 Pro, I said to him, it feels like you guys have an understanding for Sergeant Hammer that maybe goes beyond what some of the other teams who have tried to play her, like even Octalysis, they've tried to play her once, um, have in that hero. And he said, yeah, it feels like we really do understand her weaknesses, her strengths, her compositional uh, strengths and synergies that go along very well. And, and, and banning Genji away, it shows that they're very likely to try to go back into that if Octalysis don't stop them. If they're going to do that, I think it's first pick potential. And that's what's scary, I think, about this is that taking away Genji is one element, but I think that Octalysis, they've run Sergeant Hammer themselves, and I wouldn't be surprised because if they get it in second pick, that's generally where it's been in Simplicity. We know they're willing to pick it up in the second pick, which has been their more successful area. As much as we know these teams, the Zuna-based teams, like first pick, their success rate as first pick has been pretty abysmal, sitting at, I believe, 20% right now. So Johanna being taken away. Johanna, another one of those counters towards Hammer. So if you're going to pick Hammer, you're either going to have to first pick it or potentially give it up to Octalysis. Octalysis won on Volskaya Foundry versus Tempo Storm when they played Sergeant Hammer with Prismaticism's Chromie, uh, I believe. And so that Chromie is a, uh, a pick that maybe they are going to keep in mind should <laughs> they need to. But Simplicity just get the Chromie instead. And now this continues to change some things up for Octalysis. Are they willing to pick it here with that Sergeant or with that Johanna ban? Seeing that Genji's already been banned and having a first pick Chromie, which I was totally not expecting, but <laughs> this is, uh, I, I didn't follow my own rule. I didn't expect the unexpected, Jay How That's on me. It's, it, we're gonna get some varying degrees here of drafts. The first ban on Johanna, Genji of course seems to be the staple, but beyond that, we don't know, Urel? Very high priority for both of these teams. So Blaze, too. The, the Blaze as well. I think you're all right now, especially on the side of Simplicity. Zuna seems to be loving that hero. So good. It's much easier when you can't die. So He's, yes. Though, I asked, I asked Human Pro, 
What is it about the the motivation? Because it's clear that you and Zuna have like a fire lit underneath you. And he's like, I don't know about Zuna, but the role swap for me and getting to pick up new heroes within that role <laughs> has really made it so much fun, made this game fun for me. But Urel's not going to be there for Zuna. We'll get to see Goku. And like you were talking about, Goku also really enjoying that hero. So Tahaka has been one of the better heroes for Zuna. This is not necessarily the prime to Haka Battleground, your brush stalker areas, especially when you get to that second control point. It's very limited, very, very limited. It's hard to find that snap engagement, especially while you still have that bonus movement speed. And so I don't know if that's gonna be here. Blaze seems a little bit more likely. It's just a matter of priority. And I think that they might just wait to prioritize that post second ban, because it's hard to go wrong with either one of them. But Tank-wise, we've seen a lot of Muradin. Johanna's off the table. Diablo's kind of been that second, third pick that we've seen. But beyond that, we've seen some interesting picks because this is where we saw the Johanna stitches. Did not look good. I think they knew that was a mistake. But mm. we have seen teams willing to pick the stitches as the primary as well. Simplicity is one of those, and it was a problem of staying on the point. Good, I'm so happy to see that Deckard Kane. This is another highly contested pick between the two teams, but we've seen Deckard Kane have a lot of zoning capabilities for a Sergeant Hammer, so that's gonna be really good. They get it with the Sergeant Hammer too. This is a ton of poke for the points, Jay Hal. That is, that is so good for them. The only thing I wanna make sure is they get a sturdier front line, and not having Blaze, that is going to cut into that but I want to see a sturdier frontline than that Stitches because he took so much fire when he tried to stand on the point all alone. And Chromie, Sergeant Hammer, Deckard Kane, they're not really going to venture too far in. They're going to attack people on the point, but they're not going to venture in. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this right now. All right. It's, it's a lot of poke. But with Chromie, you have to hit multiple skill, sh skill shots. Sergeant Hammer does eventually make you pull back a little bit. But Sergeant Hammer auto attack slow, Chromie auto attacks with bronze, Talons slow. Muradin with block seems very good right now against this composition. Easy to stack, you can walk in, casually stack up, find those moments to hop in. If Octalysis don't get Muradin, I, that's gotta be what Simplicity's choosing. I expect that too here. Simplicity, remember Simplicity, when they faced against Tempo, the band that Tempo kept going back to is Garage. Garage does hold a point incredibly well if it does come back to Simplicity, because on the side of Octalysis, uh, Garage is not a good pick. I mean, how do you engage into that? And you get poked down forever, you get controlled by Deckard, and I really feel with the Deckard there, the amount of slow and everything, Muradin has to be the pick. Yeah, the... We've seen a lot of Hanzo success versus Garrosh because of his poke, but we just don't see that same build, the yeah. armor reduction build anymore. But that could be something that Octalysis falls back to if Simplicity moves back into Garrosh. That you could just hook them. I mean, Stitches could be here for Octalysis. It's something that Justin goes, yeah. So the Muradin pickup definitely makes a lot of sense. Rhaegar, the early game sustain is much better. I mean, you can get in and get a little bit of frontline control, but again, the early game sustain, the healing totem at level four, if that is what you go with. Again, we've seen varying builds since the re or the minor rework that mm -hmm. we've seen for Rhaegar. The, I guess it's more just number changes than anything that have kind of brought a little of those more yeah. minor tweaks, oh, yeah, you're but right. nothing really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. All right, who is going to be on the front line for simplicity? We need some beef, and I am not meaning ETC here, though that is an old calf classic. Yeah, I don't, ETC wants to go in, Chromie and Hammer want to just chill out. I, I can't imagine that would be there. Only Again. if he wanted to sit there and then power slide backwards just to lock someone down a little bit longer for Chromie to get those skill shots down. Garrosh seems the likely variant an outside shot because we have seen K1 in the past. And Zuna too. Zuna gets to Haka. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, There's the garage. That's about as, as meta for this team as you can get with what's left. Final pick for Team Octalysis. Liking look, likely looking at another backliner. I mean, I'm totally, if you want to control that front line, I mean, Jaina does have some vulnerabilities mm -hmm. against this combo, but you have a cleanse. And so Jaina controlling a garage. If you're ever a Garage versus a Jaina that is constantly slowing you down and letting you not be able to engage and you get poked and poked and poked, 
it is not an easy task. Yes, there is a Decker there, but between a Hanzo and Jaina, that is enough poke and burst potential to deal with that. That's an old classic. I mean, heck, you could even go Lee Ming, and I'd be okay with that. Oh, yeah. You have two uh, pretty immobile heroes in Sergeant Hammer and Chromie. Chromie's going to stop to throw out her bombs, and you know what Sergeant Hammer's doing, sieging up, so that anyone with those kinds of skill shots would be nice. I could see Lee Ming. Uh, we haven't seen a Phoenix anywhere through this draft. Again, just any type of slow and frontline control is cool. Mm -hmm. Lee Ming, I think, again, gives you more burst damage. A lot. You get sustain, and the burst damage is a little bit easier on this battleground in particular because, I mean, you only have so far to run if you're really trying to hold a point. And the minute you concede ground, and that's the thing, is like in competitive, the minute you concede any bit of ground, if you're a Garrosh and you're standing about three quarters of the way on your side, and you back off even slightly, you will lose that point, at least momentarily. So Li Ming does give you enough sustained poke that as long as you're hitting skill shots, you're splashing damage in there. It does, and it also can reach out towards that Sergeant Hammer if you get into the right position. So Sergeant Hammer and Chromie on the same team, done so that there is no uh, counter of the Chromie, which Octalysis has shown on this map versus the Hammer. It's enough of a change that we're going to see Hosty playing the Chromie. Wow. And when Pro on the Sergeant Hammer, and so far Hosty has had such phenomenal Hammer play, I'm surprised to see them make that switch. What do you make of that? I think it's easier to play Hammer than it is to play Chromie. Okay. So if Hosty has played a lot more Chromie, a lot more efficient in hitting his skill shots, then it definitely makes sense because it's hard not to get value out of Hammer, and level four self-cleanse is pretty easy to pull off for an experienced player like K1 Pro. I'm not saying it's because he doesn't have the skill. It's probably just because Hosty has more experience in scrims. Another game of simplicity, another Sergeant <laughs> Hammer. Let's see how it works out for them. We are heading into Full Sky Foundry to kick off this best of five between Simplicity and Team Octalysis. We're gonna kick things off today with, uh, again, a little bit more of the unexpected as we get these games underway. And Octalysis, of course, helping to lead that charge. And speaking of leading that charge, Justin will be on the front line. He's gonna be on Murden. Goku, of course, the URL, gonna try to get back into that team on the backside. Drada, the new player here, going to be on the Li Ming. We'll have Prismat on the Hanzo. And of course, rounding it out is going to be Buds on the Rhaegar. Not what I expected between the backliners, but excited to see how it works out. In the red, Team Simplicity, Hosty flexing over to the Chromie, which puts K1 Pro on the Sergeant Hammer. King Caffeine, he'll be playing his Garrosh. Up next, we'll see Tiger JK, new support player to the roster. He's going to be playing the old man, Deckard Kane, and finally Zuna on his Dahaka. Yeah, I, I really thought Block was going to be the choice for Murd, and I mean, slow autos from this entire team and dealing with Bronze Talons and Sergeant Hammer auto attacks seem there, but we have seen a lot of stacking. Those are stationary targets that you can stack up pretty easily on with Murd. It feels like that's just a standard justing talent too by this point that's or fits more into his play style he wants to be aggressive leading the charge too similar to what we would have seen from fury well k1 pro took down the sidewall i don't know if that's just a casualty of war essentially there as he was targeting that but it seemed like it was more focused so maybe they'll try and get in there and maybe snipe that well over time but for now both teams falling back we know the minute that one minute mark hits it's a matter of getting this cycling it back and that way you can double up potentially on your turret camps for that first control point. The real action is, is anybody willing to go after that healing pulse when there's a Garrosh on the other side and just can throw you away? Urel might be the one that says yes, because I will just smack you with a hammer, and if you throw me, I will jump right back and then smack you with a hammer if I didn't get you the first time. If nothing else, Simplicity is like to send Hosty there just to try to st stack up his Sandblast, continue getting those stacks. But the real place where he's going to find a lot of value for that is, of course, around the control point, which will be spawning a little bit later on. Stormbolt does not connect on K1 Pro, and with so many people coming out, this needs to be cautious for simplicity. Leaving K1 Pro here by himself, as we see the rest of the team rotate, he does not have his unstoppable yet. I think a lot of this comes down to Dahaka staying in the bot lane, Goku going over. They have picked up four on the side of Octalysis. It looks like Simplicity is going to concede this point. And I must say, this could be the determining factor in the first skirmish of the game. Again, the first protector is not as punishing, but if you're telling me I have an opportunity to get a punisher, or excuse me, a protector or not, 
and it's all based around should I contest this, I would I'd venture to say most of the time it's going to be worth it. We see Hand of Freedom again being the choice of talent for Urel. Uh, several teams have been playing this, and because of the slows and roots of Deckard Kane being a big uh, follow-up for any Garrosh throws, Though I think a lot of the Garrosh throws here are going to be more defensive, just trying to make sure that people can stay away from his Chromie and Sergeant Hammer. But should that be the case, and Deckard wants to lock some people down for the damage of those two, then Hand of Freedom is likely going to be able to help someone scurry away from that poke and maybe even avoid a Chromie combo. Well, I don't know about the Chromie combo as much anymore. You know, generally Mobius Loop is held. There's a goat in the middle of the air. And now it's landed. Uh, when goats fly, when that is the day fly. that we expect an upset of the century. There's going to be the follow-up. This might be it. That might be the indicator. Prismaticism makes it out okay. Nice body blocking Look right now by us. Zuna. Again, most wow. body blocks for days. Yes, to Zuna that. thought he had it. Going to miss the drag. Zuna thought he had it. And then Rhaegar just wriggled away with probably 20, 30 health there. Yep. This is a time when I think our Rhaegar player Buds is very happy to have chosen Wolf Run because he dodged a whole lot of things there, but that was still a lot of time that Simplicity put the damage in toward Team Octalysis, and that's given them a lead in this control point. Though Octalysis, keeping up with that experience advantage that they have, are going to have seven slightly ahead of Simplicity. King Caffeine's going to back off for a little bit so that his team can get this turret. They got the turret, and they sent Sergeant Hammer to the top to deal with the camp. So yes. right now, that will allow this to be in control for Octalysis, but this will have Simplicity rotate down, allow them to contest this and get a shot at the first protector. Right now it's a matter of clearing this much, clearing that as much as possible and then coming down. You don't necessarily have to full clear it unless there's enough time and right now only a 40% for Octalysis will give you a little bit of extra time, but it's about to be go time any second now. Using the Siege of Prismaticism and Draded, nearly take a tower in this mid. If Octalysis can pick up this Triglav Protector, they are likely to be able to get a couple of front walls down, which, of course, doesn't quite net the same as it would have been before. Jumped in, Time Trap stopped, but there is King Caffeine taking a lot of poke. Well, that puts him into his armor place. There's the cleanse being used. Uh, one of the things is that the, time, the slowing sands are available, so set, level eight was picked up there for Chromie. That's going to help here. We're in overtime. Big knockback by Goku. Slowing sands, but the turret is down. Healing pulse now used. So now it's just a test of wills once this turret finally does fall, and it has fallen. Simplicity, yeah. they got to heal up. But look at Calf. That is the problem, is he is sustained a lot of poke damage because of that leaming in Hanzo. It's not even the Hanzo with the armor reduction. It's just the scatter arrow build and a ton of damage between the two. Root drops down Goku from being able to jump out. Now the Chromie damage starting to chunk out some of the members of Octalysis. Goku has to jump away again, and this should be enough for Simplicity to regain control. Got it. Octalysis will have a moment to come back and contest again as it was only 62% before everything came back. So the heals are in. You can look at the health bars. They're all healing up as we go oh my. into the fray. Oh, wow! Drag him back and then throw him himself. Butts does not make it out of life. That is teamwork right there. And the follow-up from Deckard Kane, that was incredible. And Zuna gets another drag <laughs> taking out Murden. That gives Simplicity a protector, and I guarantee you, uh, Buds was not expecting a dinosaur to come flying at his face like that. When goats fly, how about when dinos fly? That was that was really excellent teamwork because it was a matter of, here, I'm going to throw you out there. You bring him into me so I can throw him even Back, further. Get the slowing sands and the stun, get the Deckard <laughs> Cane. Talk about Chain CC, goodness. Well, heroic abilities now with those kills, with the front towers that they've been able to take here for the rest of Simplicity. Chromie already had hers. And we're going to see a stay a while and listen from Deckard Kane, though it's been a lot of Lornado play this weekend. We'll see how Tiger JK can set things up, stop any aggression from Octalysis, should they try to get in there and get a fight going. The 10's getting close here for Octalysis. There's only a few seconds left and a little bit of health left on this. I don't think they can get much more out of this. Unable to get the fort. Would have been a really nice pickup had they got that for the race to 13. But it looks like that's all that they're going to get. Tahaka has done an excellent job soaking those lanes in the meantime. 
First protector, a couple of kills, and some structure damage. Simplicity off to a good start. Not too shabby at all. Octalis is checking in on the heal pools. There's plenty of camps available to everyone, including the turrets for the next protector control point, which will be in the top lane. And teams are going to work on getting those as fast as possible so that they may be able to get uh, even more. Just continuing to cycle out those cooldowns on cooldown to have those for the wars. Time Trap has been initiated, and that damage going out on that Protector. Girash is going to go in, gets the toss off, does have the taunt. That's going to start things here. They have the Blunt Force gun, and the back hits Buds. Keeping two on the top is the Stay Wild. Listen, it keeps justing, is standing, napping on the point. He goes down. Goku was hit by a Time Trap. Going to step back forward, wants to get this kill on King Caffeine, but that is a tanky Garrosh. And even though an orb hit Hosty at the end of that, King Caffeine not going down meant that two kills for Simplicity with this Chromie Sergeant Hammer comp is going to net them that heal pulse. It's mounting. It is mounting quickly as Octalis is still struggling to find their footing. I think the damage has been there, but the healing from Tiger JK on that Deckard is just... It's overpowering. I mean, what can you do against this? And the Garrosh seemingly living forever. The lower his health, the more his armor. You're like, why won't you die? And Garrosh just stands there. They hold it now. They finally do get this top four down. There we go. Nope. Yep. Oh, hold on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> you said mounting, and my immediate thought was like sands in an hourglass. <laughs> so are the days in Simplicity's lives as they've been able to take out a fort, get the lead in this game, and have a level and a half lead over Team Octalis. This is where we often see things slow down quite a lot on Volskaya Foundry in the area of time between the control points and a whole lot of ways to manipulate rotations, only having the assault camp in the top lane. So it's a lot just about for the team that's behind trying to get some structure damage to get back in, but with towers not giving you as much experience, it's been hard for teams to get that comeback experience so that they can contest on even footing. But Octaluses are doing what they can to get to that point. Yeah, I mean, there's just not a whole lot. I think the advantage right now is clearly going to be on the side of Simplicity when this next team fight kicks off. They have the wall to fall back to. They have the well to tap to re-engage. And we saw that actually have a major impact in that first fight as King Caffeine was able to go back. And it was after that well tap that we saw Simplicity start to mount the comeback, reclaim control, and then get those kills. And Octaluses, they did the same but they won't have that opportunity here. So this is definitely a moment where I think we'll see Simplicity take control. 13 will be picked up by Octalysis once they get another turret, and then they'll come up here and we'll have another brawl. Just see how long it goes, and Octalysis is still struggling to get their first kill. You can see Dahaka, Zuno was playing very safely, trying to keep the double soak going, but not overstepping his bounds at all, because he knows that one of the best ways for Octalysis to get back into this game is to get a pick on him, push in the lanes so that experience is lost for Simplicity and that lead that they're trying to maintain all the way up till 16, until 20, so that they can try to win the game off the next point, potentially, uh, from that snowball is less of a factor without Dahaka there. Also sending Chromie down allows Simplicity to get that other turret again with the uh, rotation in those cooldowns. And now we're ready for the next brawl. This is one that Octalysis is desperate to win so they can catch back up to Simplicity. Oh, you know, Brightwing somewhere is saying it's fight time because there's no avoiding it here. And if Simplicity wins this fight, they'll have a lot of control. Goku does receive the healing. There's the self-cleanse that's going to be there. The Dragon Arrow out as well. A lot of utility here from Simplicity. They answer with a turret of their own. Still have the healing pulse, but right now control is still in Octalysis' favor. It's being contested. We haven't hit that 99% mark, so Octalysis, they're holding strong for now. That was really good for Simplicity because you saw Justing following that Dragon's Arrow up with his dwarf body. 99% for Octalysis before they're pushed off the point. Ardent Defender now used as Goku kites his way all the way around. Sees a Kalen Pro, but is knocked back. And between Hosty and Kalen Pro, it's just too much damage for Goku by himself to deal with. In the middle of this, Simplicity actually did grab control. So now they'll race towards 19. The scary part is, is that 16, 16 is just under half a level away. And so Octalysis, they can only stay here a little bit longer. Again, if they lose this fight and 16 is picked up and a protector, that's where the snowball potential happens. So Octalysis, this is a very important fight for them to take. 
One thing is the unstoppable for K1 Pro was used, so he had to back out of position. Now he's starting to hover Siege's way back into the point, having the slowing stands to protect him too, which looks like Hosty wants to reposition. And now the big overtime battle begins. Running out of time is Team Octalysis. They look for the taunt on Justing, who gets a cleanse and jumps out. Another Dragon's Arrow. Yeah, just no follow-up, and it's been hard for them to get into position. Draded has wanted to get in, but K1 Pro on that hammer has zoned him out, just completely zoned him out, and that's been difficult. And, you know, we saw Mobius loot, but the adaptation in the build here is we're seeing shifting sands, which grants you spell power when you hit with the sand blast, which is having an effect on that Dragon's Breath that's coming down. So I'm like, man, that's hitting a lot harder than it should. But getting that extra spell power is making up for that deficit on that level seven pickup. Yeah, confidence in his ability to hit those skill shots is what I see with that pickup. Also at level 16, a uh, big deal is having that scroll of stone curse, but I'm also looking at Earthshaker, more control, even more for our Garrosh player, uh, King Caffeine now as Another Trig Love Protector is going to further Simplicity's lead. They take out another fort. They're just looking at this bottom lane now, and being able to open this up is going to be huge for them if they can get this. Well, K1 Pro wasn't here to see. She'll start to move forward again with the remnants of this Protector. Let's see if they can bring this fort down. They got a bit hasty there because they ate quite a bit of damage. I think they just need to mainly focus on getting structures down because with only a 10%, I feel that was a little bit wasteful. They started out good getting the front structures down, but wait for those minions to come back up. Now 16 is close for Octalysis, which means this defense is a bit easier. Only 1% health left on this. Cleanse forced to be used. And now they don't get this. So the race towards 20, that took a major blow here because they, I, I would say, mismanaged that protector. They can still siege up. Don't get me wrong. They can still siege up here with a Sergeant Hammer and a Chromie. This is Mobius Loot Chromie, and it's nowhere near as effective. No, it will take longer, and someone needs to watch this flank because Justin's coming around from the side. That was a time trap that was desperately needed because Tiger JK was the target. Look at Goku with the long flank. He still wants to make this work for the team as they hit 16. Goku gets knocked back. Dahaka's taking some damage, has the essence to heal himself up. We'll see the stay wall and listen, but jumping in, getting the stun, Tiger JK is stopped from that and now is in a dangerous spot as he falls. Now there's going to be more as we see the damage coming in, but nice return damage there by Hosty, bringing in the pain on Chromie. Again, I think Simplicity, they should be fort down 18 plus, rotating out, looking for something else on the map and racing towards 20 in the next protector. Now Octalysis has found the fight. Oct Goku with the big flank coming in there. They get the kill. They get the isolation kill onto the Decker, which means that for Simplicity, they've got to back off. And now they're going to not only lose that fight, lose out on experience, but they're going to concede control to the rest of the map and start to give up camps. I think their understanding of that, which is why we saw them try to siege up, but what has been problematic for Octalysis in fights is trying to move from left to right in the team fights because getting past the Garage to Haka, even the knockback of Sergeant Hammer was not working for them in control points, which is why we saw one flank and then an even giant, a bigger flank from Goku just to get in it and get on Tiger JK. And that worked. It just worked barely. They had to get that stun in the nick of time because he was trying to drop stay a while and listen. But it did work in a way that Octalysis got one kill and has regained some semblance of control in this game. Taking down the well, and that's control over that bot lane. Again, neither team now with a well for the next control point, which will come up here in just a moment, in a minute or two. Uh, we are also seeing Giant Slayer picked up for Hanzo to try and get some percentage-based damage against that Garrosh. So, the adaptations and builds continue to try and deal with the problems that are on either side of the battlefield. You know, like LFM Esports that we saw yesterday versus Tempo Storm, both of these teams have struggled with the ability to get an early game lead or stay even in the early game, but then trying to finish out a game. Octalysis, that happened versus Heroes Hearth, but that you can also chalk that up to the scaling comps and Heroes Hearth. When they decide to bite back, they bite back hard. But Simplicity has also been able to uh, do really well in games versus teams like Tempo Storm, even take a game on Towers of Doom versus Tempo Storm. We'll see if the momentum swing is far too much for Simplicity to deal with, or they can continue to keep a hold of this game that they have fought so hard to achieve with this Sergeant Hammer, another one of their many Sergeant Hammer comps. Okay, this is the discipline moment, is that now Simplicity, again, how they got that 4th or 20 right now? Let's just put that into perspective. If they had got that 4th or 20 right now, now they're going to have to wait a bit. They've got to go, and Octalysis knows that they've... That was... 
ambitious. Yep. Uh, it's going to miss there, but they knew that they have to take a risk. That is, well, look, 20 is about to be here. We have to do something. Posty. This he didn't time out that. It. Now he'll time out. Say, well, unless it was used to. This is costly for simplicity. They just need 20. They, they need 20. They still do not have 20. I mean, they're going to get it off this minion wave here, but. Patience. <laughs> they got it. So this gives them a bit of time. There's a camp in the top that has to be dealt with by Octalysis. But again, 20. The minute they show top lane, Lee Ming shows push in bottom lane. Use yes. hammer, push in bottom lane. This that is this is you want to prep this protector. Orbital BFG is one way to make sure and get some structure damage on. Mm -hmm. But just prep the protector. Push that lane out. What is preventing you right now from pushing in that lane to set up for a potential game winning protector? Having a turret to drop on the core or on the keep for that game winning protector too. I agree. They should be a little bit more aggressive here, trying to get that fort down, maybe even start looking at the keep towers if they can, but not getting too separated. And they do have Dahaka on the point. So they have someone who can come in if necessary. Team Octalis is doing the same thing, preparing for this. They get the heal pulse to the top. They're gonna have the camp that pushes the top lane. And now with the protector coming in, looking at taking down the first keep of the game, Octalysis will need all they can do to defend this. Well, Protector's coming in with the entire wall in place. Yes, the BFG is nice. It gives you great zoning when that thing continues to rotate. This Protector's going to rip through structures. They still have a chance to win, but it is difficult at this point into a Li Ming and a Hanzo. They're going to have to have the patience. You can't rely on minion waves because it's just not enough. Keep minimum. Yes. But I, I, the potential, the probability of ending the game now is significantly lower. It forces them to have to get some kills to make that more likely. Doc and Chromie and their protector go back. K1 Pro Trying to is get outside of this. Orbital. Goku's going to jump in. They have the Dragon's Arrow, too. He did not add the Unstoppable this time, and he gets deleted by Octalysis. All he was trying to do was get in position for Orbital to shoot it at the next two keys. Ooh, and now it is coming back to bite them. This is the second member down and probably not the last. There's going to be Contagion used. The Cleanse going to be there. Zuna is fighting on point, but three members have now fallen. Yes, they get the keep. And there are no forts still down for Octalysis, but they have a camp in the top. They can push down the middle, start to open this map up for the next one. But simplicity is, they're running out of steam right now. They can still fire it back up in the next fight, but Octalysis has a great opportunity here. It does feel like Octalysis have figured out a lot of what simplicity is trying to do. They have been able to make their way around that garage, around the Dahaka. And getting that kill on Sergeant Hammer was everything. This this keep is gone. If one person yeah. dies here, it's game over. You cannot afford to defend this. You have to wait. This keep is gone. Hammer back in one. Still 17 seconds for the staggered death of Dahaka. Octalysis not getting any more kills. They're going to start to back out of here. They have accomplished what they need to do. Well. Even game in terms of keep versus keep, obviously the global still on the side of Simplicity and the next control point will be in the catapult lane. So Simplicity definitely has an easier defense. Catapult's gonna do a little bit of shield damage, but those things will come back up once Goku takes care of that. So they've dealt with that for now. Orbital's gonna path right through the control point and also rotate towards this mid lane. And so it will have a cumulative value over time but it will undoubtedly come down to the next team fight. The good thing for Simplicity is where the catapults are at is in that mid lane so that they can uh, keep those clear when they're fighting over the control point a little bit easier than Octalysis, who will have to send someone to the bottom. But there's also the uh, conveyor belt that goes straight from the bottom lane up to the mid control point. So Octalysis can utilize that to their advantage to try to keep those clear so they don't end up uh, having that lane pushed out because now it comes down to a team fight. Get the right amount of kills with a keep down on either side, and this will be game. Octalysis is lurking. They do have vision. They have control. They have mines are down for dismounting. King Caffeine anchoring in position. Time traps as well. So they have a choke point they feel comfortable standing in. Slowing sands as well. So this support camp here, see who's willing to commit. Well, mid is pretty pushed out. For simplicity, you have to get that cleared out and push that back to the point. Because what has 
we've been seeing is Simplicity want a lot of room to move around, and that gets harder when the lane is so far pushed against them. Sergeant Hammer wants to move around, try to avoid some of the poke. Uh, Chromie wants to do the same. Decker King wants to stay back out there too, and then just put one of those beefy or frontliners actually on the point, which is what we're seeing here. <laughs> BFG already forced out of chain, y'all. Uh, Chromie only at 53 stacks, still waiting to get that clone seven stacks Goku. away. Goku comes in. There's going to be the flank. Time trap is out. There's some damage. Isolation is going to be used, but a cleanse. Now Ardent Defender popped. Oof. That's a big BFG. We also see Ancestral Healing, unfortunately not be being able to reduce that by the Emerald. There's still a camp. I don't know how much damage was done to it. This poke. Yeah, the poke is significant. The camp at the top, it, depending on how much is left, could potentially take down a keep. The BFG is going. Octalis is, it feels like their backs are against the wall right now. Yeah, definitely between a rock and a hard place is the feeling for Octalis. Despite getting the momentum back in fights, they need to get the fight going. We see the Dragon's Arrow go out. They're all jumping oh my in God. and they blow up Sergeant Hammer. Stay a while and listens now to be used. But unless they can get a kill with this right here, right now, they're looking at Prismaticism. The taunt comes in from King Caffeine. Hosty blows up Hanzo, making a one for one. They need to keep Cap alive if they can. He's falling low, but as the armor just goes back in, they blow him up, giving another reset to Drayden. That might be enough to help in this game because if a protector is picked up, that will go straight to core. And a protector this late in the game, its success rate has been incredibly high, as we saw in our last series there in EU before we started our day here in North America. And for simplicity, it might just be reload, take this fight 3v4, because I don't think they have a choice. Yeah, Sergeant Hammer will be back pretty soon, but it's 80% continuing to climb. They have Zuna to get on the point and potions to heal him. To respect the elderly, so not the bottomless flasks. They would like, a, there is yet another Blink in from the, the front line of Octalis is the, is the end of Deckard K now. Hosty, he will be running as fast as those little gnome legs can carry him. And with the time trap, he stops justing for a little bit, but this seems to be likely the end. Yeah, I mean, all they got to do is take the protector, go straight to the core, and it is over. There is almost nothing they can do here. K1 Pro trying to survive. Goku hits the Divine Steed. Cap is there. Even that, this protector, it's game over. And we've seen another comeback here for Octalysis. Simplicity unable to close it out, losing control in some of the most, it seems like they had control, Gilly, and maybe let some of those slip through their hands. But you gotta credit Octalysis for knowing when to fight, and more importantly, how to fight. Wow. And Drated was blasting people in those last few fights. Yeah, the, the adaptations made for team fights to try to figure out how they can get back in on the Sergeant Hammer was excellently done. That is why we saw Octalysis be able to take that win because the moment they started figuring that out and the moment that Sergeant Hammer couldn't be in control of her own destiny, she couldn't knock people back, she couldn't play it slow as she would like, that's when things changed and you felt the momentum shift. It seemed like maybe with that last control point fight, it was an insurmountable victory for uh, simplicity, purely because of the orbital BFG, the camp in the top, the catapults but in the they bottom. Move they but then, yeah. Move forward. Sorry, what? He, they moved forward and just got blown up. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, I don't, like, I, there's, okay, I, I oftentimes speak, especially on Infernal Shrines around the top shrine in particular, is the lane control and what catapults do. If those catapults are pushed up, yes, the control point's here, yes, the lane is here. But the minute they start to come forward, you start to lose control. You give ground a little bit. And holding that point is difficult. But that doesn't mean you have to go out to push it out. You can simply hold it. And they opted to push that out. And that hammer was so far forward and got just one shot. And I'm thinking, maybe you don't need to be there. Because I, I think they had control. You said moments before that, they're poking, they're poking, they're poking. There's just too much to deal with. So how do you give up that poke? You get out of poke range. And... It, it's tough. I think it's a very tough loss for simplicity. I think they're also really reliant on the the uh, siege tactics that Sergeant Hammer has her own unstoppable and the armor that she has too, but with a lot of different ways of making her use that, then suddenly it felt like if Murden dives forward, hits a storm bolt, she gets scared and uses that, then a dragon's arrow is just brought out and then locks her down and then they have enough with, with Goku who can jump in too that 
it just it felt like there wasn't enough, um, not necessarily patience, but there was just enough of ways to try to scare Sergeant Hammer, especially once those blow ups did start happening. K1 Pro was like, ah, uh, I I need to stay alive in these fights, but he he's never gonna get a chance to knock people back and save himself if any of those stun locks start. There's so much to be said for patience in this game. And Simplicity, I think they lost a little bit of patience, got a little bit antsy. I mean, if you're a team looking for wins, you're, you might try and force it a little bit too hard. I don't want to say that what they did was wrong. I just think that it was not as optimal as they could have had mm -hmm. in a couple of those moments. And I think they just got antsy to, to try and finish the game. And it felt like they had control and then lost it. Well, if you remember when they played Dragonshire versus Tempo Storm, they had the Dragon Knight, felt like they were going to win, but then they had the Thrall inside the Dragon Knight and a Mayav's Cage from Vin uh, was disastrous for them. They're getting into these situations more and more where they're starting to encounter the weird uh, situations that you only get through experience in that. So we are seeing improvement there. It's just you only get through those and learn from them as you experience them. But, you know, we've been talking